Welcome to another IoT Central workshop. Please send any question that you might have directly in the chat. We will follow up with any unanswered question uh, using the email address you've registered with. My name is Louis, Louis Moreau. I'm part of the Edge Impulse Developer Relation Team. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to classify motion signatures with machine learning using Edge Impulse. To reproduce this project, you will need a device that uh, embarks a three axis accelerometer. As in most of modern phones, you already have this sensor. I'm going to show you how to use your phone to classify the data or to collect the data and to run the live inferencing. We will go through the entire ML Ops pipeline uh, from the data collection to the live inferencing, passing by the digital signal processing feature extraction and the neural network training. Few words uh, about Edgeables is the world leading embedded machine learning platform. It helps you build a full end to end machine learning pipeline to accomplish a variety of ML tasks such as regression, vibration, or sound classification image classification or object detection for computer vision. We work across various fields such as predictive maintenance, etc. You can import uh, your data from any sensor and deploy your model to almost any devices. And what's important is that you maintain control over your data and we generate an open source firmware that you can use and that you can modify. At Jimbo Studio, it's the online platform that handles everything for you, including the data collection from the embedded sensors, labeling your data, performing any pre-processing calculation, training your machine learning model. The end-to-end -end pipeline is called an impulse. You can test your impulse on live data with a connected sensor. You can Choose any pre-processing block that you want. You can test your model on data that has been unseen to the model. You can deploy it. You can do many different things. And from the impulse that you will get, it includes the pre-processing code, the churn neural network, any anomaly detection that you may have. Um, and you will have as well some useful information on the performance, uh, on the on-device performances. This being said, let's start this workshop. If you do not have an account on Edge Impulse, feel free to create one or just log in. For this project, I'm going to create a new project called uh, Motion Classification. And on this project, I will try to classify four different kinds of movements. One is being idle. So your phone does not move at all. It's a uh, stand, standby on a, in a table. Second one will be up, down, like this. Third one is a snake. The device is doing something like that. And the last one is wave, uh, such as if you say hello. I'm going to show you how to collect the data, but if you want to supplement your data with some data that we've already collected for you, feel free to go to Edgeimpulse documentation. At the bottom, you will have a pre-built data set that you can directly download and use the uploader or the, well, the CLI uploader or directly the online uploader to push this data to your project. Let's get started. So I'm going to use the accelerometer data. Well, let's get started. I'm going to go to the device to connect a new device, which is going to be my phone. I'm going to show the QR code. Oh, I forgot to. Do that. Let me show you my screen. There we go. So I'm going to flash the QR code. To connect to my device. Let's click on that. And here my phone is connected. I will need to class to collect some motion. So let's start by the idle movements. Set label, label. This one will go to the training data set. I will come back to that in a second. So I will just leave my phone on the table and click on start recording. So it will record the data for 30 seconds. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go to the data acquisition. And here you can see that you have one training set and one data and one test set. The training set will be used for the training. And the test set will use to validate that the model that you've built is accurate enough on data that has been unseen during the training. 
So I'm just going to show you that another few seconds, and then you will be able to see here directly the data sample that you've collected. I'm going to do another one. So up, down, so that you can see the difference. Set the label, and I'm going to start recording that. So I'm going to move my device up and down for 30 seconds. All right, so here you can see that the movements are obviously different. We can see a lot of, we can see different peaks. We can see the frequency as well in the way I did it. So this is great. I'm not going to spend the whole video just collecting some data. I'm going to upload the existing data sets that, that I have. So here is back in the gesture that I just downloaded from the documentation I've, I've shared with you. I'm going to select everything, open that. And those, I will put that in training and I will infer from the label name. I'm going to begin the upload. Okay. And I will do the same with the test data sets. We choose gesture and testing. Open and upload. Okay, great. Now, if I go, I'm going back to the data acquisition tab, I can see that I have around 16 minutes of data collected for the test, uh, for the training set and something like yeah, 2.2 2, 2 minutes and 24 seconds uh, for the test set. Here I can see that I've got one data symbol that has a, rem, a name that uh, is not present in my training set. It doesn't matter for now, we'll see the, the behavior later. I'm going to navigate to the create impulse. I'm going to leave the default parameters by now. I will select a pre-processing block here in that case, it's going to be the spectral analysis, which is great for analyzing repetitive motion, such as data from accelerometers. This is great. It's the one I want. Note that you can also create your custom one, your custom processing block, if you have knowledge in DSP or digital signal processing. We have others for different kinds of uh, projects, such as audio, uh, images, etc. I'm going to use the classification learning block. And this one will give me an output of four different classes, a probability between those four classes, whether it's idle, snake, up, down, or wave. I'm saving the impulse, and then I can navigate to the spectral feature tab. Here you can see a preview of the raw data, what it's like directly from the sensors, and what it's like after being pre-processed. Just with one data sample is not really understandable, I will leave the default parameters. I will save that and I will generate the features. What is important is that if you can detect in the feature explorer, some clusters or some regroupments in your data samples across the one that share the same class, it means that the neural network will probably learn easily. Let's see what it's uh, like for this uh, specific data set. It's creating the features. Okay, great. So here we can see some clusters in the data. We can see at some point that those are mixed with the up, down and the snake. Probably this pattern with this pattern feel the same at some point for the neural network. It doesn't really matter. The idle, uh, there is no much variancy in the movements. Uh, it's mostly all gathered. And we can see the on-device performances. Uh, here it's for Cortex M4. Uh, for my phone, it's probably going to be a bit faster because I've got some more power uh, compute resources. Yeah, let's navigate to the next uh, tab, which is the neural network classifier. Here, this neural network architecture is pretty easy. It's a dense layer, one of two dense layer, one of 20 neuron and one dense layer of 10 neurons. You can add some different uh, layer types if you want, or if you're already familiar with machine learning and with Keras, you can directly edit this uh, Keras uh, code to switch back to the visual code. And I'm going to click on start training. Here, it will take maybe a minute or two to train. And after that, we will be able to see the loss and the accuracy. I've set 30 epochs, uh, which is the number of training cycles. 
And on the validation accuracy, we can see here we are having something like 0.96. I'm pretty confident that this project will get some good accuracy. We'll see that at the moment. So now that the model has been trained, we are performing some calculation to know which, how long it will run on the different targets that you want, how much uh, RAM and ROM it will, it will use. And we do that for both the float 32 model and the quantized model. Okay. So the model is complete. We have an accuracy on the validation set on of 99.9%, so which is fairly good. I can see from the confusion metrics that the up down differ at some point with the snake, that it's the thing that we've seen in the, like in the feature explorer, some of the data sample were really close. This does not really matter. Now I will want to uh, test my model across the test data set. So all this data has been unseen during the training. And when I click on classify all, it will run the inference on all those uh, results, on all, all these data samples, and we will see how good our model is performing on the test data set. Okay, great. So hundred percent, there is one that is called a shake, which is not part of the data set. He predicted it as a wave, but this does not really matter. Um, now if I want to test on my, on my mobile phone again, uh, you can select the, so here you can see all the different options that we have for deployments. Most of the people use the C plus library. If they want to integrate that with the target, we support Arduino libraries as well. Qubit, if you're using some STM32 boards, WebAssembly, it's the thing that is going to be used for the mobile phone, etc. So here on the mobile phone, it will just show again the QR code. So I already have the project on my phone. Let me put it back here. Okay. Hope my phone is still connected. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to switch to the classification mode. So it's going to download the project using the web assembly thing. And so I won't even need internet to run the inference, to run the live inference. Everything will be compute, computed locally on my mobile phone. So I'm going to see how the model perform in real like in real conditions. It's finishing up building the projects. Okay, great. So sampling, let's do some up down movements. Okay. Oh, I lost the connection. Ah. You reload the page. I'm going to try to wave. Okay, wave, good. I'm going to just put it on the table and it should predict idle. Oh, snake, it's probably because I moved. Okay, idle. Great. So that's it for today. We have several other workshops incoming. I strongly encourage you to, to have a look at those. And I want to thank IoT Central for hosting this workshop. Uh, you can find more workshop on Edge Impulse Micro Session at IoTCentral.io, where this video will also be available on demand starting tomorrow. If you have any questions about Edge Impulse, please post a question on our forum.edgeimpulse.com. We'd love to see what you built. Show us on the forum what you, what you created from there. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.